Hello, everyone. Keep your fingers crossed. I'm recording from my own home. It's not exactly the ideal place, but, um, you know, pandemic style. So let's just get on with it. So I have received earlier today, and this is what prompted the video, I received an email from somebody and I'm going to read you that email and then I'm going to answer it. And it goes like this. Hello, Liana. I've been following every time the materials that you publish on sexual development and I love them a lot. But there comes a time when you can't really evolve because you don't have a partner in your life. Probably the answer is predictable. You know, you don't give matrimonial advice. But I said I'd ask anyway how you see things from your end. What do women usually do, at least those that you work with, when for an already long or extended period of time they cannot find a partner? What solutions do we have to mutually find each other? Um, because I assume that this problem is also on their side love you and then she gave me her name i'm not going to read it i'm going to keep the anonymity so um well here's how i see it uh it doesn't necessarily mean that every facilitator or practitioner or coach or therapist out there is going to uh, tell you the same and i'll give you two how do i say this i'll give you two answers one is the politically correct one and please bear with me because otherwise i'm gonna get busted <laughs> by other people in the future when they come across this video so i don't want to you know i don't want to mess up the field and the politically correct answer it's not the one that i apply to myself by the way in my personal life but whenever i work with somebody i do use this one because i realize that this one is the least uh damaging and also the most helpful and empowering one also but it is politically correct first and foremost and the answer goes like this if you want to have a relationship you're free to have one if you want to have one night stand because you run into somebody or you find somebody and you think that they are great for you awesome you can do that and nobody's gonna tell you otherwise and nobody should tell you otherwise you should be in your inner power to decide and also take on the consequences because it might go well it might not go well you might stumble basically you know develop feelings for the person or um miss out on other opportunities so there's always a uh in because i studied economics in college there's always an opportunity cost whatever choice you go for there's always a different opportunity that you sacrifice and that is your opportunity cost it it applies philosophically in everything so including in your intimate life if you don't want to have anybody you're free to do so if for a certain period of time you can't see any way in which you can grow it is perfectly okay to stay in the same place until you see and grasp and it becomes accessible to you to go on a different path and then start growing again. Growing doesn't necessarily mean that you're always gonna, you know, you're gonna keep this ascending um, trajectory. Sometimes you'll stagnate, you'll stay at the same place. Sometimes you're gonna fall down a bit. It's like, you know, stock market, it goes like this. It's never a straight line, it's never, so it always oscillates. And it's the same, if stock market is ever gonna be a good example of this is the one, then it's the same with your intimate life. So something always happens and it is in our nature you're going to see this in nature also sometimes we grow we blossom we bloom we expand sometimes we constrict we go within and we hibernate or we sometimes we get injured so we stagnate we go back a bit there's this is the reality of it and your intimate life is always going to be the same and i've seen it also on me i'm not always growing though I wished I was. Sometimes I can't, sometimes I'm fed up with growing and I just take a break. Sometimes I even take a break from posting, you know? I don't always do videos. I don't always do Instagram or Facebook posts. I don't always write newsletters. Um, I don't always build classes because not, I'm not growing and, and expanding and, and 
overabundant always of things. And that's the reality of it. So um, the most empowering answer and also politically correct one is that whatever you choose, whatever is accessible or possible for you is the correct thing at that time. Yes, it's, it's the toughest to process when something nasty happens, when you get really bruised, emotionally speaking, um, when you get sidetracked, or when you get, who knows, God forbid, traumatized. I've had this, and the worst thing for me, or the toughest thing for me was to accept, okay, that was the, the only thing that was possible for me at the time. Had I been able to do better, I wouldn't have ended up in that situation. But you know, um, how you manage, no matter what situation you come across, is definitely more important than how you make sure that you always grow. How you manage things is the sign that you're growing also, but you're not focusing always and ex obsessively on growth. Now, about being in a, you know, a partnership, one where you grow, I don't really know what is in the heads of men, because I don't. I don't know what's in the heads of most women out there either, because I don't. I only know what's in my head, and I only know what other people share with me. So um, it might be, like the message said, it might be their problem also, or it might not be. Um, coincidentally, I was watching today a video from the natural life cycle this is another youtube channel they got like 100,000 followers and this is a dating channel for men and there's an entire um, array of facilitators there who are doing videos and today i was watching one of their videos going on the fall of the american man and they were doing a study case mainly on the book the Fight Club, the movie, the video game. They also mentioned um, American Psycho um, and American Beauty, a few other movies that came out at the same time with Fight Club. So back in the 90s, we're talking. And they were also pointing out there how men are in a way losing a bit of what they were told or maybe felt that it was instinctually their nature because how society is built right now and how the consumerism oriented society and peaceful, non-aggressive, non whatever, theoretically, is impacting a man's psyche and their psychological well-being and their identity for some people. Because some men are also driven around the idea that they got to fight off danger and be the protectors. And if there's no violence and no threat in this so quote unquote peaceful society, though that's not the case, but physically not much is happening. You know, we're not attacked by animals or whatever, except in very few cases. So the, their entire psychology is a bit upside down. And before reading this email, I was ruminating over what this video was saying and I was trying to think okay so what do men feel like what is their struggle and challenge maybe for women it's not like a lot of women do struggle with the fact and it's painful that they're not finding an ideal partner and they don't have that beautiful relationship fulfilled life and still to many women their identity it's not necessarily the case of the one that wrote to me but on a broader scale, for many women, their identity is centered around, do I have a man beside me or not? Because a single woman, a celibate woman, is there's something wrong with her. She's not attractive. She's not feminine. She's not cherished. She's not presented well enough. She doesn't have a man by her side. So she's not protected and spoiled in a good way, meaning she can't be that feminine because she has to struggle to fight for her existence. Um, it's also part of the struggle that I'm going through, by the way. So I do know the uncomfortable facing of that societal model. And also the fact that I'm not growing to the place where I would love to grow. And I know that I can grow, especially after doing this work. I've seen a lot of potential. So, you know, the fact that I don't have the right person because I never take anything else but the right person for me you know, the match. That's it. 
It's either the match or nothing. <laughs> I'm a bit extreme here, but you know, that's I gotta own what I am. So I don't have. I know that for me, because I told you that this is, you know, what I apply for myself. If it's not the match that I feel and I'm also like it's not just in my heart that I feel it's somewhere in the nether regions that I, something happens and I can feel it then I stay single you know I go cold turkey um, I've always done that it was painful in the past nowadays I do it from a place of power and I tell myself no that is a waste of my energy and my time so I'd rather struggle to make another post or do my practices. Sometimes I don't feel necessarily like another practice is going to help, but whenever I get into my practice, I'm like, I'm so happy I did this because I always get stuff, ideas, inspiration, just juicy, succulent, rich states that I just relish in. So to me, that's also, okay, I'm not going this way, but I'm going like this and I'm enjoying it. And that's not a problem for me. I don't know what to tell other women because this is a very individual um, journey. And if something in your mind is still ingrained as in I gotta have a partner in order to grow, it's not easy to deal with that and also come out on the other end saying, okay, but if I don't have the matching partner for me, I'm gonna stay single and that's it. And I have faith that I will eventually find that person and I'll grow with that person. That person is gonna grow with me because otherwise there's no point in having a relationship. So um, I don't, so I can't really encourage you to think and act the same way. So if sometimes your fears of not growing and being alone are so strong, and you wanna act out from them, I don't judge it, okay? I know that it's worse to swallow some of these emotions if you're not ready to manage them. I also understand that. Some people are not yet ready to really sit and, and what's the word? Purge through their fears, fear of missing out more precisely. So I never encourage people to go through that. If I sense that they're not, they're gonna go insane with that, they're gonna get even more frustrated, then, you know, as unpolitically correct as it sounds, I let them act out of their fears. And I tell them, look, if this is, if you're going insane, if you don't do this, even if you know that it's a mistake, do it anyway. Because probably the cost of you freaking out and being even more frustrated because of that fear of missing out and you can't handle it, just go and do whatever you feel that is best for you. So I don't have an, a suggestion for all women out there. I don't know what to tell each woman to do. Certainly, I don't know what to tell each man what to do. But for single people out there, I do understand the struggle. Sometimes I get it too. It's I'm, I'm also human. I'm connected to this reality. And in my 38 years of life, I've seen that if I stay with those, you know, I freak out like big time, but if I, no matter what it is, you know, lying on the, cause I have the floor behind me where I usually put my yoga mattress and I stay there, whatever it is, I cry, I do TRE, I do breath work, I do nothing. I just listen to music. I take a cover and roll myself, wrap in it and that's it. Whatever it is that I do, I know that after worst case an hour, worst case, usually it's less, it's like 10 minutes or 20 minutes, but sometimes it can last even longer. I know that it'll be fine. And I don't, I, I've cut myself out from so many fake things for me that there is no, like I, I really cut myself out from any potential, you know, superficial relationships. The second I smell that you're whoever you are around me and I smell that there's a potential but not the thing that I want, I'm like, I'm out. I wasn't always like this. In my 20s, up until 34 or something like that, so up until recently, I stayed there and I struggled and I suffered and I paid 
worse consequences than just staying there on my mattress for 20 minutes. I wasted months, nerves, hair thinned even worse than it did in my teens. So, you know, I went through a lot of stuff. So for me, it actually got to the point where I told myself it's either the good match, the right match for me, or nothing at all. But for other people, especially the woman writing and anybody else, if you want to date somebody, if you want to have sex with somebody and you can't not do that because it's tough. The toughest thing is to not do what you already know is a mistake, but it's so tempting. That is the toughest thing, you know, to abstain yourself from making an obvious mistake, no matter how tempting it is. So, and I know that not everybody can hold back and contain that temptation. It comes with time, with a lot of struggle. But if you can't contain your temptation, you know, it's probably the most viable option for you to indulge in it. You'll, you're definitely going to have consequences. So if it's a temptation and it's a negative one and you can see it, there's going to be consequence. So yeah, that's it. Long story short, uh, whatever your best viable option is in every moment, act on it. If you ever get to the level where you can abstain yourself from acting out on something that is obviously not constructive, awesome. And the reward is that you get more chances to meeting your right match and holding yourself. Because boy and girl, wait until you meet your match and you're going to see the challenges that come with, you know, not rushing in, not going all in too fast and messing up things. So yeah, there, there is a point in containing your temptations or containing yourself when you're tempted. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, I hope this video helps and I will see you with more videos from my own bedroom. Though I wish I could go more to the yoga place where I do my practices also. See you soon. Bye.